Hello everyone, it's Yobi from Fellow Tarot. Welcome to my channel. We've got a Juggernaut June <laughs> monthly wrap up today. Uh, this is just part of the decks that I'm going to show you today that came into my collection in the month of June. And I have to say, I did not want to count them, but at the end of the day, I had to. <laughs> and we're talking about 30 decks. And I have to say something. I did not buy all of them and um, 16 of them were actually really generous gifts um, from a couple of uh, my subscribers, really, really wonderful souls. Um, and I really love those decks. I have shown some of them in a few videos before this one. So in order for us not to stay here for six hours, because that's how long um, I want to always talk about my decks for, I'm thinking I'm just gonna uh, quickly go over the decks that I've shown you already. And whenever there's a new deck that I haven't shown, then in that case, I will take a little bit more of my time. So let's get to it. So let's start with these two decks, um, the Housewife's Terror and the Power of Intention uh, card uh, by Dr. Wayne W. Dyer. Um, I had no idea about this deck. I saw it on a post from, um, you know, an Australian uh, trade, sell and swap uh, Facebook group. I liked it. I liked the um, concept behind it. And so I thought, OK, well, I needed something to pair up with the Housewives Tarot uh, because I felt like the Housewives Tarot will pair up really well with the Zombie Tarot, but those are two tarot decks and I wanted to find something different. Not necessarily an Oracle deck, which is, I don't really see this as an Oracle deck, but as you can imagine from the title, it's more like an affirmation kind of deck. And so when I saw it, because of the, there was something about the color palette, there was something about uh, the drawings on the cards that really, you know, I thought, hmm, this could be a really good match for the Housewife Tarot. And I tried them all together and I actually really like the result. So in order to show you all of these decks, in some cases, I'm just going to show you them um, up, paired up together. Um, because I, I think that is actually a really funny way to get to know a deck when you um, see it, um, you know, at work. So just to show you briefly, this is the Power of Intention deck. And you've got an image on all of the cards and then you've got some kind of an affirmation or, you know, like a note of encouragement or something like that. And then if you flip it, you'll see that there is a little bit of an expansion over the sentence or the message that you see at the front. And I really like that um, uh, the background of all these cards looks like those recycled, those old type recycled uh, papers. You know what I mean? The ones that um, um, right now they feel like they're being antiqued or something like that because you can actually, you can actually see the pulp and you can see the, the filaments and stuff. And it has a really nice kind of old feel to it and I really like it. Having said that, uh, there are a few cards, um, I didn't know it when I bought it, but there are a few cards that refer back to a very, um, let's say, religious or faith-centered kind of affirmations, and which is not necessarily my thing. Um, however, I, I do still enjoy this deck because I feel like we can all find some kind of meaning in the spirituality um, of these words and so whenever there are references to god for example for me um, i do think about the way in which i feel towards spirituality and towards the divine which is not in, in not religious in any way but it can be seen and it can actually adopt that kind of language that we can see every now and then in these decks and, um, you know, it's, it's always about whatever you feel you're comfortable with uh, that you need to go with. So, uh, okay, let's level them out. So these two work really well together, uh, not just because, you know, there is this kind of um, echoes between the colors and stuff, but it's also because um, I feel like the Power of Intention deck um, kind of brings back the Housewives Tarot um, to a more urban kind of feel, if that makes sense. 
Um, so create a stress-free life between the Two of Swords and the Page of Wands. So this is, it works really well, as you can tell, because the Two of Swords would definitely stress you out because you're stuck between a rock and a hard place and you're too much into your mind. And it's just, you know, the Swords is suit of a mind and you're just overthinking already. You have probably, um, you need to decide between two choices, but they're both really difficult ones. And it might actually be two difficult ones because they're not necessarily the ones you wanted at the beginning right so you feel like you're blindfolded because you don't have all the information so how is that not stressful so the affirmation card tells you try and step away from that stress because after all um, we want to be reminded of the spirit of the page of wands which is always creative always spark uh, sparking with life always ele electrical and always so kind of an optimist towards life and we want to uh, go from this situation towards this situation so this is um, a really happy epiphany um, when i started using these two decks together because i felt like every time um, i I used this deck that was a very, very strong and direct message for me. So um, be infinitely patient between the Queen of Wands and the Queen of Cups. It's almost as if it's reminding the personality or the archetype of the Queen of Wands to perhaps stop performing every now and then and just get back into your subconscious and your inner self like the Queen of Cups would um, you know, suggest. So it's, um, it's just very, very, it works really, really well. I feel like also the kind of art style, there's not a lot of um, uh, images on this deck because it's rather empty. As you can see, there's a lot of space in between the, um, the image and, and the um, sentence and the message as well. But when you look at the kind of art style, it actually reminds me of the housewives. And so I really do appreciate that. It's something that I don't find difficult to actually use it together. These two, I feel like they're really, really made for each other. So the Six of Pentacles uh, has got to raise your energy vibration, but the Six of Pentacles in here is seen as, you know, the trick or treat um, kind of thing that happens um, at Halloween in some countries where you're actually giving and receiving, but most of the time, um, you're looking at what you have in your plate and it, it tells you raise your energy vibration don't, don't get stuck in whatever is this given to you because in some cases it, it just is it becomes your task and we'll see that in the progression of the suit of pentacles because we'll see that happening in the seven of pentacles and the eight of pentacle, pentacles perhaps even more so in which you really have to uh, step up and you know it gives you that sense of um, urgency and the energy and the, the speed of the eight of wands in order to be able to uh, to do that. So um, for each and every one of these combos, I feel like there's a message there, and it's not. So it's a powerful message, but at times it's also a whimsical one. It's kind of a funny one that you can actually, you know, have a chuckle, but perhaps still uh, pay attention to what. Um, it has been said to you. So these two, this is the Power of Intention deck and this is the Housewives Tarot. So this next deck I quickly showed in one of my latest videos as well uh, because I was pairing it up with another deck. This is the Divine Nature Oracle written by Angie Salins and the art is by uh, Greg uh, Spalenka. Now this deck is an absolute pleasure. I really, really enjoy it. It has a really nice um, guidebook as you can see as well it's got a full in fully illustrated page for the cards and then a little bit of a message related to the message that is on the cards this oracle deck is a it's a us games is it yes it's a us games um uh released and it's um it, it's got a lot of uh, it, it packs a punch so it's got really good value for money um, I probably got it on sale, but I don't think that even the recommended retail price is not exuberant, um, which is a really good thing. It doesn't have like a, a huge amount of cards, as you can tell, um, but it does uh, come with this kind of uh, semi dull, I would say not necessarily matte, but not glossy either kind of gold gilding. Um, it is a bit of a glossy um, finish which is not necessarily something that I, it's not my favorite, but I don't mind. 
uh, but the artwork is just absolutely spectacular and every time that I look at this card I think about the Marielle Tarot and I thought to myself this is the page of cups in the Marielle Tarot and I really want to see how these two pair up together so I'm going to show you just that. So the Marielle Tarot is not a recent acquisition in my collection. I've had it for a long time. I, I honestly don't know um, how long I've had it for. I used to have a first edition, uh, the one that was a bit controversial because of the depiction of the uh, um, High Priestess and also I believe the Empress was slightly different. There is a bit of nudity, um, I'm just warning you, um, if you don't know this deck there is a bit of nudity, so just for you to know. Um, it is a very powerful deck, it's a very special deck for me because um, it kind of reminds me that tarot is a, um, a medium to just know yourself just as well as you get to know the others you read for. Um, because it does have that kind of introspection, the prompts to have that kind of introspection uh, whenever you read with this deck. Um, I also have to say that in many cases, because of the power that exudes out of the cards, I feel like there's also a lot of that can be said and done about shadow work with this deck although it is not necessarily my i really love this deck card by the way it's not necessarily my favorite deck and when it comes to shadow work but it doesn't matter because every now and then you actually need to vary i believe that you really need to look at different decks whenever you do some introspective work because you will see that if you use the same deck over and over again, it might work for you, absolutely. And if it does, please keep on doing that. But in my case, um, I feel like I kind of get stuck in the same issues. Oh my goodness. I swear, <laughs> I swear this is not planned at all. You've seen, <laughs> you've seen it. I did not plan this at all. This is crazy. Okay. Um, so I was talking about the fact that this card that says it creates stillness reminded me of the Page of Cups in the Mary Altar and that's the reason why I paired them up together and they came up together. If this is not a message, I don't know what is. So we got the Ten of Discs, which is obviously the suit of Earth, or Pentacles, as we may see it, and create stillness, and the Page of Cups, which is a bit of the archetype of the empath. And for me, this is a clear message. It's a very personal message, definitely a personal message. And I really love the fact that these two characters are actually looking towards each other even though they're not actually looking at each other but they're leaning or dipping their chin or leaning their head towards each other because it could have come you know the in the opposite way and that would have signified a bit of a rupture a bit of a, a breaking uh, perhaps but this is a union this is a bridge this is creating a conversation and a confirmation that these two deck actually want to talk together want to play together they want to be read together i really really I'm so stoked that this happened. I, I honestly, I didn't. I know that you, pro you probably go, nah, come on, you planned it. <laughs> I swear, I didn't, I didn't plan it at all. It just happened. And um, it was like a, a happy coincidence. Um, but I do believe that these decks really uh, work really well together. They read um, like a very powerful combo. I've only tried that a couple of times this morning because um, it looks like these videos are probably spur of the moment, but actually not. I actually do prepare my videos before I film them um, because I, I just don't want to, you know, be caught off in something that I don't know or, you know, that I, I, I don't want to say something that is not correct or I don't want to say something um, that, you know, doesn't make any sense at all. And I probably still do. So sorry about that. <laughs> Because no one is perfect and, and I'm the archetype for the imperfection. Uh, but I do believe that there's, um, you know, when I uh, try two decks together and the match is a match made in heaven, like in this case, I don't really need to stay hours on them uh, because they, they really show me that they want to work together since the beginning. And I think that the fact that those, those two cards... Um, you know, came up together. And those are the two cards that actually convinced me to try these two decks together. It is really a sign that there is a lot of communication going on between these two. So I'm, I'm quite happy that uh, it happened on camera. Um, so um, as I was saying, this is the Mariel Tarot and this is the Divine Nature Oracle. 
So these three decks are also gifts and I have to say I didn't have time yet to have a look at them, a proper, let's say, look at them. I know a lot about this one, so let me show you. This is this came with a book as well because it's a very interesting tarot deck and it's called the Fifth uh, Tarot. So the fifth tarot is uh, taking the concept of reintroducing the fifth element of Isa in uh, together with the four known elements. And therefore, it's really intriguing for me because the concept is very interesting. I am uh, studying alchemy and I feel like alchemy is something that you need to keep on studying forever in the sense that every time you think you've reached a little bit of a degree of knowledge, there's something that pops up and tells you that you actually know nothing. I really love this deck. Um, I've just had a quick glance at it and I had a look at the, uh, at the book. It's a very interesting deck. It, um, let's say the, um, um, I really love the artwork. I love the colors. I love the way in which, um, you know, it refers back to the elements and the alchemical power of the elements in tarot, in the tarot. And I have been reading about this deck as well because I was really interested. And obviously, as you can see, the suits are named after the elements. So this is a very interesting deck because, let me just get <laughs> to it, obviously. Um, um, it, it's got, obviously, the, the suit of fire. It's got the suit of, let me get there. Um, uh, this is the shell, so it's, it's the cups, so the suit of air which is really beautiful because I love any kind of marine themed uh, deck. But the interesting thing about this deck, if I can get that, so we've got the suit of feathers, which is referring back to the uh, element of air, as you know, as you can actually see in many other decks as well. And the suit of stones, which is referring back to the element of earth. And that is also rather common. And I'm slowly getting to it. I know. I'm slowly getting to it. There you go. So you've got the suit of lotus, and lotus is referred back to the element of ether. So if you're not familiar with the alchemy of ether, ether is the element that was, um, let's say, conceptually created uh, to justify all of the elements present in outer planets that were not accounted for on Earth. So anything that was thought to be part of a substance uh, present in a, in a planet, not a planet Earth, um, was, uh, and, and that was not um, you know, made out of fire, earth, air or water, was thought to be made out of ether. So um, what's going on is that um, later, later on, we actually knew, we actually get to know that there is no element, no such element as ether, in the sense that everything that will eventually come from a different planet is still made out of those four elements. However, there are theses, there are um, studies, or there are, uh, let's say, hypotheses lately that are resurfacing, um, saying that ether should be reconsidered, not necessarily as something that is different from the other four elements, but it could either be a different combination of those elements or more likely, it could actually be um, something that has not been accounted for yet. And so whenever you feel, you, you hear uh, perhaps in an article, you read it on the papers or on the internet and um, they talk about some unknown specimen of unknown material, of unknown substance. Everything that is labeled as unknown, recently there's a lot of a, a different philosophical approach or a chemical approach to that in order to reintroduce the term of ether. So I, that is the extent to my, of, of my knowledge on that, which is very limited, obviously because I haven't had time to read about it. And it's also because I feel, I feel like there's not a lot that is certain 
yet about that but it's extremely intriguing it's very very interesting i feel like we're opening ourselves up to the possibility that we were wrong because there's so many things that uh, have been proven wrong during the centuries you know some uh, dogmatic affirmations that were considered correct until perhaps a couple of i don't know decades ago and um and i really love the fact that true science is always constantly doubting itself and trying to reprove theses that have been already proven because there are new elements that come to our knowledge every day and we need to incorporate that into uh, whatever is already known but let's look at the next tarot so this is this is the beatrix tarot um so this is by sylvie brace and which is funny because sylvie is a, when i used to live in paris in paris everyone called me sylvie um so my name is sylvia but it's it's actually quite pretty um i am have not had time to have a look um at this deck it's uh, the booklet is in french which is cool I love it because it says the blue ray, so it's like a, um, the ray of light, so the blue ray of light, and the confidence of tarot, the confidences of tarot. So it's going to be very interesting for me to have a look at this because I actually really like the color blue. Every kind of shade of blue and teal and um, between blue and green are my favorite colors. And this tarot has, you know, like the name of it, is really focusing on the color blue. It's a very beautiful deck. It's one of those decks that I actually really, really like the borders around the artwork because I feel that in this case, the artwork kind of need to be framed and I really enjoy it. So um, it will be part of my study decks when I come back from my trip. So next week on Friday, I'm actually leaving. As you can see, the um, uh, the miners are peepish, uh, rather uh, definitely peeps, let's say, um, which is actually something that helps me get away from the symbology of the cards in many cases, and it gives me the possibility to focus more on the elements because it does remind you of the elements and also of the numerological approach, which is always very important for me as well. And I actually apply the numerological and elemental approach whenever I read RWS, uh, RWS based decks as well, because I believe that that should be an integrative um, you know approach uh, to a holistic approach to reading tarot so this is the beatrix tarot and then we've got the oramore tarot tarot de Minotaur. so um, this is as i said before this is also one that has been gifted to me and i have had a really quick look at it but i um i, I feel like i need to spend a lot more time uh, with it. This is also uh, French and um, it, it looks, um, so it, I feel like this deck is from the 90s uh, because it does have that kind of look to me. Um, and you see, as I said, I should have actually prepared <laughs> this conversation, but I actually don't know when it was printed and I'm not wearing my glasses. Let's see if it says something here. Uh, no, this is actually from 2002. Well, there you go. So it's a, it's very interesting. It's been published by Grimaud. Uh, Grimaud is a very uh, big publishing house in France. They um, publish some really beautiful, really, really beautiful decks. Uh, and they've been doing so for decades. And um, uh, I have the Grand Berlin, for example, which is uh, one of the most expensive decks in the world that has been published by Grimo. It wasn't expensive for me because it was a gift, but on top of everything, I actually did buy it when, um, not, well, not immediately when it was published because mine is from 1984. And I wasn't necessarily, I wasn't reading back then. <laughs> I was too little, um, but um, I have been gifted that deck probably a decade after. So this is a very interesting deck. I really like the fact that the miners, uh, the suit have different colors to it. I like the fact that there is a bit of a reminder of uh, different cultures 
and the expression of art in different cultures as well. All these um, look like uh, the frescoes that we can find in some uh, grottos and uh, that belong to an ancient civilization. Living in Australia has been fantastic for me because as you can imagine, we have a lot of these frescoes uh, made by Aboriginal tribes um, back in the day. And um, a few years ago, I was actually producing a, photo a documentary based on photography. And so we were traveling around Australia, it was called Snap Happy, and it was based on the fact that uh, uh, we, Australia is a wonderful country for photography lovers. And we were traveling around the country, we were going to places and we were interviewing local photographers. And, uh, and you know, we, we also went to Kakadu, which is in the Northern Territory. And uh, Kakadu is very famous because it's got a lot of these frescoes um, in the uh, grottos, in the caves that you can find there. So this is the Le Taureau d'Oramour. Another deck I'm super stoked about is The Wisdom of the Kayak by Jane Brightson. Um, this has arrived a couple of uh, weeks ago. I, again, I have so many decks on backlog that I did not have time to go through it. I just had a quick look at the cards. Um, it is something that I've wanted for a long time. Um, I, um, I really appreciate the fact that um, uh, Jane gave us all the possibility to um, enter in her newsletter. And even though she kept on saying that the newsletter was um, oversubscribed at the end, she was kind enough to uh, produce and print um, as many deck as were needed. So all of us who entered in the newsletter actually got uh, this deck. Uh, this deck has been out of print for a while and it was really sought after and that's another reason why I was really, really um, happy that I was able to receive it. This is the guidebook, it's really beautiful as you can tell. Um, I absolutely adore the artwork on this deck. It's, um, I, I honestly, um, it is stunning for me. Um, the way in which the brush strokes create the, in the depth of field in the, in the images, as you can see here, um, the association of colors, uh, the juxtaposition of colors um, between you know, two different colors to create that kind of contrast. Um, but also the use of the black and, and the colors. So uh, images like this, where you only have really strong colors like the yellow and the orange and the red to signify the power of the fire. Or, or for example, cards in which you have a predominance of blue, like in this case, um, that really tells you the way in which the moon is acting. So the, the color blue for me is always associated with the, with the moon. Um, this deck is a joy to look at. I haven't uh, worked with it yet. Um, it is uh, for those years of um, the state of the status of the crown, uh, which I don't feel like I have entered, entered those years yet. So I feel like this is um, a deck that uh, will give me the possibility in the coming years to approach my crown years. And, um, and it's a very interesting thing because that means I will have time to prepare myself, let's say, to um, you know, study this deck, to get all the feels. But in many, many cases, you will see that there's people also in their maiden years in which they're already using this deck because it's just the wisdom that you want to um, approach, that you want to um, work with. That is something that really uh, um, is accessible to you thanks to this deck. And it's an incredibly beautiful deck. I really, really love also the way of the expression on the faces of these uh, characters on the cards because it's, it's really communicating something to me. It really is a really strong message. And I love the fact that we have the veiled one. I love all of the sacred symbols, um, it, perhaps tattooed, perhaps, perhaps painted on their hands. So this is the wisdom of the Kayach. And the next deck I'm going to show you is the Elemental Tarot by Caroline Smith. This is actually the indie edition, so you probably used to see it with a different box. Uh, this was also a, an incredibly generous gift, and I am stoked about this deck because, let me tell you, I have wanted this deck in forever. Um, the, um, the, I believe that it's a very powerful deck. I am so thrilled to have the... Um, 
the indie edition um, as soon as I saw this deck, so this is the guidebook and it's a really nice hardcover book as you can see um, it's got that kind of um, I'm almost saying a linen kind of finish but it's not the right word but you know those kind of uh, I don't know if I can show you by the texture it, it's one of those covers that has a bit of a texture to it uh, which is really nice and uh, as you can imagine by the title this deck is very interesting if you're study, studying um, the uh, um, alchemy and the elements uh, applied to tarot which is definitely what I'm doing and it's got a lot of symbology so um, as you can see here let me see if I can there you go so we've got a bit of an explanation on the key to the card the elemental name the astrological symbol the number uh, symbols which is very interesting because I, I i come from studying numerology many years ago and ever since i um i was done with my studies i actually never looked back so for me now reading tarot is always constantly reminding myself of the numerological meaning of the in the cards um, even though sometimes I don't pay attention to that, sometimes I pay attention to the symbols on the card. Um, and then the god or goddess name, the elemental symbol, and the Egyptian symbols as well. So this deck is really, really interesting, especially if you're um, into all of these kind of complementary, um, let's say, information that you can find. Let me zoom in a little bit. So when I saw this deck, I immediately thought that it would pair really well with the uh, with an oracle deck, which is called the Untamed Elemental uh, by Tasha van Ray. So let me just show you these two together because it's a very interesting combo. It's a very interesting combination. So the cardstock is very beautiful. It's, it's got that kind of a really nice feel to it. Um, it's almost uh, reminding me, uh, definitely reminding me of that kind of battery feel of the uh, 80s, um, of the US Games decks in the 80s. I'm just going to quickly shuffle that because I think it was still in order. And let me just show you what I mean because this deck has a fantastic conversation with the Untamed Elemental Oracle. So as I was saying, this is the Untamed Elemental. It's the deck here. And voila! So as you can see, let me just level it out. There is definitely a, uh, uh, let's say, they share a lot of uh, uh, very common elements. Um, as in, they share the same color palette. They share also the same kind of saturation in the colors. It's not just the colors utilized but it's also the gradation the, the saturation um, and the extent to which they are represented um, and i also feel like both decks actually rely a lot on the differentiation between the colors to express their message um, the untamed elemental is very abstract and geometrical uh, um, i feel like saying that whereas you do have a lot of illustrations obviously in the uh, elemental tarot however i do believe that you can in some cases also you have illustration on the untamed elemental oracle but what i mean is that you can definitely have this kind of conversation going on between these two decks and uh, what happens is that because the untamed elemental uh, does not have keywords it does have titles and uh, it does have you know, this kind of abstract representation of the cards. It is very inducive of a bit of a uh, intuitive kind of reading, which I always enjoy. And it's especially whenever it's referring back to an oracle. Generally speaking, the fact that it doesn't have keywords would be a kind of a deal breaker for me. But I have to say that there's a lot that uh, goes on into the interpretation of the cards. So in this case, I really love the fact that we've got Volcano and the mountain and the sun of earth so in, in this case you feel the heaviness of this reading you feel the the grounding of these three cards the the recalling that uh, goes on between the the fact that a volcano is always a mountain and obviously it reminds us of the energy of the earth and you've got that paired up with the sun of earth so that particular suit um, and i can assure you that these kind of happy coincidences 
uh, goes on all the time in uh, when using these two decks together. Um, it is an absolute joy to pair them up, and I. Um, that's one of the reasons why I actually don't mind that the um, Untamed Elemental doesn't have keywords because. For once, I actually let it guide me into the kind of interpretation that I can assign to it, thanks to the fact that I use it as a focus between two tarot cards, like in this case. So it's it's it, they are really beautiful together. It's um, sorry, I, I keep on forgetting to warn you that there is some kind of um, stylized nudity in some of the decks. Um, so sorry about that. Um, but it's very stylized and, and you know, <laughs> I think we're all adults here anyway, so I never uh, put, you know, you can actually choose whether to um, say that your uh, videos are made for kids or not. And I always say that I don't know, they're not made for kids, so <laughs> I, I hope that they're all, we're all um, 18 and over when watching this. So this is the pairing up and it's just absolutely beautiful between the Elemental Tarot and the Untamed Elemental Oracle. And these two Oracle decks that came into my collection this month are absolutely gorgeous. Uh, they are uh, by the same author, so Mel Brown. One is called the Aboriginal Goddess Chakra and one is called the Aboriginal Dreamtime Oracle. Now, these are both published by uh, Rockpool, and, uh, but it's not a recent publication. Um, they've been around for a while. Um, they have a very similar kind of vibe, which at this point actually prompted me to use them together, which is something that I never do. I sometimes use, uh, for example, um, uh, two tarot decks together because I feel that um, perhaps they have complementary energy and um, I just want to focus on the message. Or sometimes, for example, there are tarot decks that have a message, a keywords, for example, at the bottom. And in that case, I would just focus on the keywords as if it were the keywords belonging to an oracle deck. And I use that as a focus between two tarot cards. But in, I have, that I recall, and of course I could be wrong because sometimes I just don't remember everything that happens in my life. But uh, what I like to do is actually pair these two up like this. And, uh, and I just let myself be um, swept away by the beauty of the images, by uh, the beauty of the concept expressed by the images as well. As you can imagine, the um, uh, original Goddess Chakra Oracle is obviously divided in colors and these colors are um, attributed to different chakras. Um, and it, it, it actually does tell you um, the uh, the chakra when uh, uh, you read at the bottom. This is a fantastic Aboriginal artwork, and um, it's. If you live in Australia, you will know. If you don't, come visit, <laughs> because it's a beautiful country. And I really do believe that um, um, Aboriginal artwork is absolutely unique in the sense that it, it embodies all the beautiful things about Australia. It embodies the sun, the heat, but also, uh, and the rugged um, landscapes, but also the um, joy of the water, the coastline, coastline um, of the, um, of the uh, um, animals, which are, most of uh, animals here are unique. Of course, we have imported a lot of domestic animals in here, not that we had cats and dogs here before, um, you know, uh, the Europeans arrived, but the local animals are incredibly unique. And I really do believe that these two decks work really well together because, uh, well, obviously the artwork pairs up really well because it's by the same author and they do have a kind of similar setup. Um, I really like the fact that in this one, so the Aboriginal dream time, uh, yes, there are borders, but uh, the borders are actually part of the artwork. So it looks like there's more like kind of a frame rather than a border, if it makes sense. And they are absolutely gorgeous. So you can really um, focus into the messages. So we've got, for example, sacred learning between the healing journey and thirsty earth. So it's always important to be on the constant flow of the learning 
whenever we're going through a healing journey but we also need to remind ourselves to quench the thirst of the the earth in this case to me that means grounding so whilst you're going through this journey to heal your wounds and it's represented by your learning the learning of the sacred of a sacredness and your subconscious you also need to be grounded and never forget that it's um it's something that is very uh for example i've used this kind of pairings for a couple of clients and they really appreciated that because we've been actually meditating together this card is absolutely beautiful it's got inhibitions and I love the fact that it's come out between inner grief and understanding. So let go of your inhibition because the only way to uh, understand your inner grief and processes and, and, and deal with it and move on is definitely to just let go of, of those things that block you, that keep you there. I've been doing a lot of work with the client that has uh, that is processing her grief for losing her husband and um and she was saying that she she definitely connected with these two decks because there's a, a lot of introspection um, or guidance towards introspection uh, that can be done uh, thanks to these two so I'm, I'm very very grateful that we have the possibility to add these decks because they are beautiful and they're very very useful versatile and helpful so we got the independent self between the emotional exhaustion which is how I feel right now, and the quiet stillness. So it, it, gain your independence, but never forget to recharge uh, your batteries because otherwise you we really do um, incur in the risk of being depleted of your energy. And um, that's something that I've been going through the whole month of June. It, month of June for me has had 80 days, not just 30. Because honestly, we've been going back and forth with the health issues and... Um, and misunderstandings uh, with you know docs, doctors in Australia, doctors in Italy, and I, at a certain point, my husband told me I draw a line. This is it, and um, that was the day. And one night, because I couldn't sleep as usual, I I just checked my emails, and there was a confirmation that we've been accepted in Italy for the treatment, and so I started crying. <laughs> because i i just was i was really exhausted and and june has been like that so if i thought <laughs> if i thought that may had been a stressful month you know i could go back if i could go back in time and see myself in the month of may i would say yeah wait for it wait for it you haven't seen anything yet it's it's gonna get worse before it gets better which is fine it's absolutely fine but we're working towards it we're really working hard and I love the fact that he's, my husband is so strong and uh, he's got a wonderful heart and he's, he's being so conscious of the fact that I, I worry for him just as, as much as I would worry for myself, you know, and, and there's been a, a lot of communication obviously going on. So I actually use these two decks to ground myself for my own problems, for my own issues, for my own need to um you know recharge my batteries as well in the month of june and they worked perfectly so these two are absolutely beautiful the aboriginal dream time oracle and the aboriginal goddess chakra and these are two more decks that have been gifted to me by this wonderful person and she knows me really well because i have to say uh japanese and chinese decks are part of my favorites I've actually posted um, a video uh, on uh, my collection just showing my, let's say, Eastern-inspired decks, and obviously these two were part of them, so I'm not going to uh, talk too much about them. I'm just going to briefly show you. This is the Golden Dragon Tarot, and it's an absolute joy. It's really, really beautiful. It, the artwork feels like it's one of those uh, Chinese um, scroll paintings. Um, it's an absolute it's it's a stunner it's just a stunner it's um, the combination of the artwork the colors uh, the images the association of the images and and uh, the meanings of the cards it does follow the um, ws system when it comes to symbology but it takes a different approach to it as well which is very interesting obviously I'm someone who always always enjoys learning about new things so obviously um, now that I've also received the uh, uh, guidebook to this deck, I will be diving deep into it because it's very, very interesting. 
So this is the Golden Dragon Tarot from 1994, actually. And this is the Tarot of Japanese Poetry. And this is a very recent tarot. I think it was a Kickstarter that launched a couple of years ago, perhaps. Um, you can still find this deck on uh, an Etsy shop. So I will make sure to put the link in the description box below. But as you can tell, I, as I said before, sometimes I do pair up tarot with tarot. I just wanted to show you how beautiful these two are. I mean, it's it's just, they are amazing. Um, there is that kind of conversation that takes place between the two of them. There is the uh, common kind of art style. Uh, there's also the common kind of, um, you know, uh, color palette that you can tell, that you can see. And as I was mentioning before, this, the Golden Dragon, reminds me of the, scroll, the Chinese scroll paintings, whereas this is definitely, um, it looks as if it's set up as a Japanese scroll painting. So it's, um, it's a, a really beautiful coincidence and these two pair up really well together. I haven't actually tried to read with these two together like this. But I feel like it can be done and you know everything can be done in life and in tarot. I'm reading Rachel, um, Rachel Pollack's latest um, book and I'll talk about it later and I love her take on, on tarot. Her, her take is really confirming what I've felt uh, for the last 30 years at least that you know you need to know the systems, you need to study them, you need to know everything you can and that's the reason why i keep on studying um, but at the end of the day you also when given a reading you also need to trust your guts whenever a card looks like it wants to tell you something just listen to the card because there is this kind of conversation and you're just the interpreter so you do not have to overimpose your own knowledge of the card when the card is saying something different um, most of the time um, you know it's it's a matter of, so she talks about shuffling as well and shuffling is a sacred ritual because obviously it's a way to approach the tarot and to also to um, let's say uh, ground yourself to the practice that you are about to do to something um, opening your ears and your eyes to some the message that is going to be given to you and I really really enjoyed that but we'll talk about the book later so these two are the uh, golden dragon tarot and the Japanese uh, the tarot of Japanese poetry and the next two decks that I want to show you also paired up together are the Gnostic tarot and the Nature's Healing Chi Oracle. Now, these two decks, I've shown both of them in a previous um, video. And I just want to say that I did not realize back then that these two pair really well together as well. So what happens is that I believe that there's a lot of um, grounding taking place because the Gnostic Tarot, as you can tell, because of the particular style of the artwork, which is very busy, uh, tends to lift you up from the cards, from the reading, because you tend to look at the cards, you tend to uh, try and understand what's going on in the cards, you tend to look at all the colors. Some of the colors are clashing together, some others are really complementing each other. So I feel like there needed to be, whenever I was uh, trying to choose a, uh, an oracle deck to pair up with this tarot, I thought that I needed to find an oracle deck that would give it peace, that would actually ground it, that would give it some kind of calm, a sense of, uh, you know, being brought back into the uh, so below, basically. And at that point, I had received this um, oracle deck, which is by a fellow Australian, and I, don't worry, for each and every deck, if they're still in print, I will definitely put the link uh, in the description box below. So if you want to grab a copy, you can. Um, these two actually, um, they, they act exactly in that way. So you have a lot of um, um, air. Uh, the Gnostic Tarot is a very airy kind of deck in the sense that obviously it's based on the Jungian interpretation of Gnosticism. And uh, therefore, it's, it's a lot, it takes a lot of, um, you know, intellectual effort to understand the deck as well. And um, this was also a gift and it came with the book. Um, I had a look at the book and it looks super interesting. And it's one of those things that I really, really like because I love studying the mind and, and the way in which it works from a bio biological point of view, but also from a psychological point of view. And I feel like this is going to be a faithful companion for many, many uh, days to come. 
Um, but I do believe that this deck, this tarot deck, needed to be grounded. It needed to be, find a way in which to actually go back to Earth because of the airy element of this deck um, that was floating. Um, I needed to be, you know, reminded of the uh, so below. And I feel that um, the combination with this Oracle deck works that way really, really well. So this is the Gnostic Tarot. And this is the Nature's Healing Chi Oracle. And these two decks were also a, a generous gift by uh, one of my subscribers. Um, so she lives in Sydney, so I actually uh, went to uh, catch up with her. And she uh, was downsizing, and so she told me, pick anything you want. And she has a wonderful collection, so thank you so, so much. This is the Sacred Journey into the Animal Realms uh, Oracle. And it's a very quirky, I have to say, I used it a couple of times, it's a very quirky deck. Um, it's got some very interesting cards. I have to say, some of the cards at the beginning, when I saw them the first time, I thought that this was going to be a really good deck for uh, shadow work because some of the cards are conducive of that. But in, there are cards that are actually very joyful and happy. And it's a, at that point, I'm actually convinced that it's a very balanced kind of deck. There is a book, um, like a booklet here, but there's also a larger uh, book that goes with it. And I'm interested in looking at it and seeing whether um, I can get even more information um, about these cards because um, it's just a very, very unique deck. I have to say, I've never seen anything like it. Um, some cards are a bit... I wouldn't say creepy, but um, the way in which the eyes are um, depicted uh, sometimes is, is a bit uh, odd, let's say, let's put it this way. But it's a, certainly it's a very interesting deck. And then from the same person, I actually uh, took, because she, was, she actually was insisting for me to have this, and it's the Mother Teresa uh, Wisdom deck with 50 cards. Um, now, this deck is um, a really beautiful deck for meditation. Um, is um, So it's basically uh, based on photos of Mother Teresa. And then there will be um, a category, let's say, on joy, on faith, on love, etc., on poverty. And then if you flip the card, you will have a quote. So joy is very contagious. Um, so what I do, um, I actually use this for um, meditation because I find it very, very powerful. And um, it's, um, you know, when you pull one card for yourself in the morning, that is exactly what I do with this deck. And I find it to be uh, very strong, very powerful, and something that it's, it always gives you a message that can actually stay with you uh, the whole day, which is something that I really um, like in um, a deck whenever I use it for this purpose. So this is the Mother Teresa Wisdom deck. And another deck that just came into my collection is the Anime Tarot deck uh, by, this has been published by Insight Edition. I specify that because there are so many decks that are based on anime uh, lately that, um, you know, it, it's, uh, it's the one that I actually bought sight and seen. It was a friend of mine telling me that I should get this one because all of the other ones had Pipish decks, uh, Pipish Myers. This one doesn't, this one is actually fully illustrated. And if you are like me and you used to watch anime all the time, four hours each day when you were a kid, this will make you, you know, cry of joy because it really does remind me so, so much of many of the anime that I was watching. It does have that kind of artwork, um, definitely all the, and it's fully illustrated, as I was saying before, which is always a plus. And, um, and I, re it, it just reminds me so much of many um, of the um, anime and manga that I was actually reading um, because in Italy we had access to that. I don't know why, but there was some kind of deal when I was a kid um, in which there were so many anime that were imported and then, um, you know, dubbed, uh, dubbed in, in, uh, in Italian. So basically um, there was this uh, voiceover that was um, assigned to each and every character and so we didn't need to learn Japanese because we were actually hearing uh, the, uh, the dialogue in, in Italian. But it was, um, other than that, it was all Japan, of course, and that's the reason why, probably that's the reason why I love Japan so much, because I was used to, I was exposed to Japanese culture ever since I was a kid. 
And this deck is actually really interesting. I haven't used it yet, but I feel like it's one of those decks that can actually pair up really well with perhaps the Sacred Symbols um, Oracle deck, which I still don't have. I ordered it, but it hasn't come yet. And one of those Oracle decks that actually has a little bit of less elements in it, uh, less symbols or perhaps a bit of a muted color palette because it does create a bit of a contrast between the uh, busyness of the colors and the elements on the cards of the uh, tarot. So this is the um, anime tarot. And this is another deck that just entered my collection. It's the Many Queens Tarot. It's an absolute super funny uh, kind of deck. I absolutely love it. It's uh, one of those decks that I I think it's one of those decks that doesn't um, take each other to take itself too seriously. But at the same time, it is incredibly powerful. So it's a deck that I wanted for quite some time now and uh, I just couldn't find it. it um, I don't think it's out of print. It's just that I would have had to buy it from the US and, uh, and obviously, um, you know, you have to keep uh, taking into account the shipping costs and everything. And I finally found a uh, tarot friend of mine that actually wanted to part ways with her copy and she was kind enough to uh, swap it for another tech uh, that I sent to her. And so when I got it, I, I really, I love this. I absolutely love this deck. It's quirky, it's funny, but it's also, as I said before, it's also very serious. I love the fact that it plays a lot with the absences and the, um, and the presence of the uh, images in the sense that you have this contrast with the black and white, but you also have a lot of elements that are not there and therefore are significant because of the absence. And it's, it's just one of those decks that you can just have a lot um, of um, really good time with. You just look at the cards, you use them in a reading, you pair it up with Oracle decks. I haven't had time to work with it yet, unfortunately, because of the usual reason, because I have so many decks and I have a huge backlog. And uh, that's one of the things, so Juggernaut June, because seriously, uh, it's just, uh, it's going to be one of those months in which I have to make more room for my decks because there are so many. But what's going to happen is that I'm actually going to do a, a bit of a call uh, because I realized that, uh, um, let's say, from uh, the last time in which I had a bit of a uh, deck call, I've actually changed my taste or I changed my practice or I need to focus on different things. Or simply because I definitely feel like I have done my work with a certain deck and I want to pass it on to someone else for them to be able to do the same. And so I would definitely do a deck call which means that I will have more room to put the new, uh, the new entries in because otherwise, uh, yeah, we're, we're gonna have to move. <laughs> so this is the Many Queens Tarot. And uh, at this point, I just wanted to show you a couple of decks, which are for me, I will call them novelty decks. And I'm talking about the Wayfarer and the Fantod Pack. Uh, but let's see one by one. So the reason why I'm showing you uh, the uh, Somnia with the Wayfarer is because I want to show you how beautiful these two pair up together. It's a match made in heaven if there's ever been one. Um, it's like these two decks have been conceived uh, by the same author, because um, which is not the case, uh, because the Somnia Tower is by Nicolas Bruno. And the Wayfarer is published by Pardalotti Press. Um, let's see, um, Sophie Masson and Lorena Carrington. Um, so these two are not by the same author, but you will see when I show you them paired up together, it's like they live for each other. It's just absolutely fantastic. The way they communicate, the conversation they have, etc. It's such a pity that the Wayfarer only has I think 20 or even less cards um, because it's not meant to be an oracle it can be used as an oracle of course and that's the way I use it but it's actually meant to be one of those uh, creative writing kind of prompts deck and um, which obviously I've been being a writer um, I have you know in my time I actually did buy a few of these but I feel like this one 
I don't know, because of the combination of the images and the messages, it's just, it works like an oracle deck. It just really works. And of course, then you have words like magical, magical tasks, a way to between the ten of coins and the ace of wands, which is perfect. So I really, really enjoy using these two together, secrets hiding, dark places and after the ten of swords and going back to some kind of grounding and keeping you know, things close to you and consolidating with the, of the four of coins. I feel like there's a really strong conversation between these two decks. Um, it is something that it's one of, I always make this example, whenever two decks um, you feel like you're not needed in the conversation, like you're kind of a third wheel. In that case, it feels to me like it's a match made in heaven. This is what I call, um, you know, a perfect combination because you're not needed. You're just the one that is flipping the cards and that is eventually interpreting the messages and then relaying them back as a message that can be understood, but uh, it does not originate with me. It's just, I'm just the medium here. I'm just the one that is voicing uh, up whatever the cards are trying to say, they're trying to convey. And I feel that these two together are absolutely perfect and I absolutely love them. Um, and the uh, photography is just absolutely superb. So this is the Wayfarer Tarot and this is the Somnia Tarot. And the same goes for these two decks, and there's a very specific reason why I've chosen to pair up the Phantom Pack with the Port Hurl. Let me show you. It's not just all about the aesthetics or the feel of the artwork. It's also because the Port Hurl is an incredibly powerful tarot deck, but it also has that kind of a kind of a bit of a grim feel to it if i if i may say i hope I, I don't sound offended because that is absolutely not what i mean so i absolutely love the work of edgar, edgar Allan poe um, as a matter of fact i i think i was a very at a very young age when i completed um his all uh, work I, I read everything that he's been writing and ever since then, I've been admiring also whenever there was a cinematographic transposition of all of his, of some of his, uh, maybe a short story or, you know, maybe um, a book. And it's always been very interesting to me. So my approach to Poe and to the Poe Tower in specific has always been very appreciative. That's what I mean to say. However, in many cases, because of the um, very specific way in which this tarot is set up, so you've got the image, you've got the title, and you also have a sentence and uh, at the bottom of the cards. And each and every card has a sentence that is actually relating back to uh, a work, uh, so something written by, um, by Paul. I do have the feeling though that there is some kind of grimness to it, which is in some cases is fantastic when you're doing, when you feel like you need that in your life, it's absolutely fine. However, I thought uh, about how is it going to work with a, a deck, which is a Phantom Pack, which by Edward Gorey. And it is incredible. This deck, if you don't know it, just have a look. Absolutely, it's very, uh, cheap it's very affordable i think i only paid 18 australian dollars for it um, on amazon um, it's readily available and um, so it, it was first published in 1995 okay but it's been um, out of print for a long while and then you know um, they brought it back it's only 20 cards and even the description of the back it says it offers a bleak yet hilarious take on the classic tarot deck that's what i wanted so I wanted something that matched the bleak grimness of the Poe Tarot of some of the cards, but also something that breaks that and takes on a different kind of meaning and, and gives that possibility to actually stop uh, being so bogged down by, so, stop being so um, dark about the, the cards themselves. And, you know, and, as a... I keep on saying that because I don't want people to take offense. I absolutely love the Poe Tarot. I love his works, as I said before, but I feel like sometimes I actually need to laugh. Um, in the face of something tragic, I need that I, I need that laugh. I need to have the possibility to actually lighten up my heart. 
and, um, and and look at things perhaps in a different way and that only for a moment I don't need much more of that only for a moment but that that will give me the possibility to actually recharge perhaps a little bit and feel a little bit better and then you can go safely back uh, to in, in, you know, knowing um, how things are difficult and how the struggle is real. But at least you had that chuckle and you had the moment in which you could actually pretend uh, to be, you know, uh, to have that lightheartedness um, again in your life. And I realized that this, if you don't know this deck, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to read something just out of one card, if I can open it again. Uh, because I realized that uh, there's only a title uh, that refers back to the image, but it's not necessarily something that uh, you might um, understand if you don't, uh, if you haven't read it before. So let me just find it. So this is the limb, and of course it will be the last one that I find because it's, it doesn't go in um, alphabetical order. Uh, and there you go. So we've got this one, the limb, February, miscarriage of justice. Gabe's a forged snapshot, morbid sensations, a useless sacrifice, alopecia, a generalized calamity, broken promises, ignominy, ignominy sorry about that, <laughs> an accident in a theater, fugues, poverty. So you see what I mean? Um, it is grim, it is really dark. But at the same time, it goes, it just crosses the border into being hilarious. Um, I watched a video by Danny, Danny Mystic, and she talks about this deck and she explains it a lot, a million times better than me. So I highly recommend you check out uh, that video. If I remember, I will actually link it and um, in the description box below because I really believe that uh, you need to see it um, under that kind of light in which he tells you that perhaps uh, concentrating into all this grimness um, you know it, it depletes your energy so let's let's do something funny let's uh, yes let's um, stay on the dark side but look at it and have a chuckle at it so that's uh, these two together are absolutely gorgeous the artwork really recalls each other and um, also the fact that obviously the color palette being black and white is very similar. So I really like to use these two together. So we've got the Phantom Pack and the Port Tarot. So there were many more decks, but I've actually shown some of them in uh, um, a couple of videos that I posted before this one. And uh, I will post others in the coming videos. And I didn't want this video to be too long because there's also going to be the draw for my giveaway. Uh, so that's going to take time as well, at least in preparation. Um, so I'm just going to switch to the books that I've been enjoying this month. Definitely, I've been rereading for like the fourth time. Uh, David Mitchell's Cloud Atlas. It, this book, I don't know, it's, it's just one of my favorite. I love the way David Mitchell, um, he can actually mix reality with fantasy, with sci-fi. Um, and it, it feels like it's a continuum, like it doesn't feel like it, it cla the genre actually clash one with the other. It really feels like it's in a natural kind of way. And I really, really enjoy all of his books. I actually read all of them. Um, of course, I like one more than the other. Uh, but Cloud Atlas, because uh, there's a movie that has been based on the book, and it's fairly, it, it's fairly accurate in the sense that... Uh, there are sometimes movies that are just inspired by books and then they just go off on a tangent. But in this case, the movie is fairly, um, you know, um, uh, it, it follows uh, the, uh, the book quite well. Um, I just adore this book. As you can tell, it's been, uh, the, the poor thing has been through a lot. <laughs> There's a lot of stains on it. Um, it's an older edition. I just really, really enjoy reading this. And as a matter of fact, after I finished reading this, I actually rewatched the movie also for the 10th time because I just really, really enjoy that kind of, uh, you know, way in which you look at the fact that the past and the present and the future are all interconnected. And there's one sentence that it is, ironically, it is in the movie, but it's not in the book. And it says that our lives are not our own. 
and and so and, and then it goes on at the saying that every single thing we do every single thing that happens to us is actually linked and i don't always believe that um i believe that you can actually choose whether to um you know believe in something or not but sometimes it does feel like it the coincidences in my life sometimes are incredibly uh, powerful and so I really, really love this book. Another book that I just started is the Gnostic Tarot, as I was saying before. This is uh, referred back to the, um, uh, so this is the book that is accompanying the tarot. Uh, extremely interesting because I absolutely love learning new things and this is really packed with new information. And then as I one mentioned, I was talking about this book by Rachel. Um, this, uh, I, I don't know, I honestly cannot find a, um, a way to express how much I love this book. It is my favorite one of all of the books, I read them all. This is, um, to me, it's a very moving book because it confirms many of um, the ways in which I evolved my practice. And it really felt like I was reading it and Rachel was reading it back to me. Um, so one very interesting experience is to actually um, buy or to listen to the audio, audible, uh, the audio book of this because um, it, it feels it's not read by her, but uh, it feels like she is there with you, sitting next to you, and you're just having a conversation about tarot, and it's absolutely wonderful. I absolutely loved this. Okay, and so we've come to the moment everyone hopefully was waiting for. The giveaway is the chariot sketch, um, the, the, the sketch of the chariot card from the Bones and Earth Flesh Tarot um, by Alabal on camera, but the sketch is actually by um, Anna Turian and it's been illustrated by her and signed by her. It's an A4 uh, kind of size. And uh, I have to thank you all for being so wonderful because I always had a bit of a conversation whenever someone was sending me an email to enter the giveaway uh, they were always saying I appreciate your channel so much I love your videos and uh, it felt magnificent it makes me want to do a giveaway every month <laughs> so that I don't have that much stuff to give away but that was a way for me to thank you all for being wonderful and for also for allowing me to reach a thousand subscribers in such a short time because I did that in six months which is but to me, I honestly think it would have taken me six years. So it's been fantastic. It's been a wonderful, wonderful adventure. And I really do appreciate all, all of you for everything that you've done and you keep on doing for me. And I hope that I will keep on posting interesting videos and talk about tarot that you like and, you know, have a safe and interesting conversation with you all in the comments below. And in September, I will also start my membership. So if you're interested, um, I will do a video in which I will explain what I will do for the different levels. We'll do uh, three different levels and uh, just give, give you a little bit of a preview in the third level there will be a lot of really really strong work uh, introspection work done with me on a private uh, level let's say um, which is basically what I do with my clients so I'm actually offering that for a heavily discounted price now I looked into you know using one of those apps uh, for the draw but then I realized that the app I was downloading that into my phone which is actually what I'm using to film so it wouldn't have worked and I also like the idea of doing it the old way, you know, writing all the uh, names down in pieces of paper and then just putting them all in this, uh, well, I don't know what you call it, in this uh, container, glass container. So let's have a look. Let's have a, a bit of a, you know, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I've never done this before. I think it shows. Uh, but, okay. Ugh. So here we go. Uh, hello. So mood. Uh, no, that. Uh, sorry, I can't read my home. Uh, oh, Maddie Gamer, Maddie Madison, you're the winner. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So we'll we'll have to see how to send it to you um, to the US, uh, but not to worry. I'll make it work. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> Maggie, I'll also send you an email. Um, so I deleted the part of your email where you said the domain the email is coming from just for uh, privacy purposes. Um, I will send you an email to just uh, confirm. But congratulations, you are the winner of this uh, giveaway. So thank you, but thank you everyone, really, because it's been absolutely fantastic to get to know all of you that participated to that. I'm really, really humbled by your support. It's been uh, wonderful. Now, that was all for today. Thank you so much for staying with me till the end of this video. It really means a lot to me if you put a like and, and maybe subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, it's just a really good way for me to get in touch with the tarot community and create this kind of meaningful connections that I'm always uh, really um, happy about. So have a great day.